Today, because feminism refuses to acknowledge that there is an integral traumatic aspect to falling in love, there is a painful aspect of falling in love. What is the painful aspect of falling in love? When you, it's this idea that love itself is transcendent, but transcendence is opposite, is finite, it's limited. So when you look into the other person's eyes and when you're in love with them, you are in a transcendent mode, but also at the same time, you know that deep inside there is a deep void because you are both, or one of you is gonna die and that is not gonna last. And that basically finitude of it is basically what is traumatic. The finitude of love is traumatic in itself. And that philosophical understanding of what love is has been completely basically destroyed by this uh, immense, vicariously traumatized psychologization of society, which always focuses on building a standard for society. The standard for society, society is that love is not abuse, that love is not traumatic, when really, in fact, it is traumatic. Love is traumatic. So what it does is give a standard that we absolutely do need, a standard that love is not abuse for the people who are on the bottom of society, the people who are who have are so stuck in a storm of inability to think, a storm of their own minds, the storm of their own traumas. Yes, for those people, they need a signpost, logic that this is the definition of feminism, or this is the definition of psych, that this is the definition of psychology. For those people, yeah, we need it. But for the people who are have a normal amount of psychological problems, existential issues, normal amount of depression, normal amount of anxiety, a manageable amount of anxiety, those kinds of ideas actually work in opposite. And what they do is they focus us to, they force us or they habituate us to always keep an eye on the contractual or the, the cost benefit analysis of our interpersonal relationships with each other. And basically this is a way of undermining the possibility of creating community. Because what, what is community? Community is a place that requires your uh, unpaid emotional labor. All communities need your unpaid emotional labor. All communities need your unpaid civic labor. Community itself cannot run by capitalism alone. Community itself is a, another form or another rendition of family. I know that there's a lot of problems between kin-based and community and you can't just uh, easily go up the chain like that. But just for sake of argument, uh, socialism, family, community, all of these things, uh, our social relationships with each other, when we commodify and we create boundaries between our interpersonal relationships and we say, oh, well, I did this for you. Am I getting something out of this? If I participate in this social union, will I get something out of it? No, you can't just look at the material interest. You have to also look at the cultural aspect. And that cultural aspect is what is it motivated by? It's motivated by these idioms that these feminists have been spreading. Idioms like it's too much emotional labor to educate you. Idioms like et cetera, et cetera. You don't owe anybody anything. Yeah, if you don't owe anybody anything, my friends, we are welcome to the uh, cyberpunk dystopia that we exist today, a society where nobody owes anybody anything and we give all power to the privileged 1%. Thank you, feminism. Thank you for progressive politics, for creating this kind of society and then sugarcoating it for us, telling us that it's a good thing. All right, so thank you for taking the time to, um, and I just wanna end with one idea here. The idea is that I'll tell you a little secret. The secret is this. Uh, let me, and I just want to end with one little secret. The secret is that the secret to healing, what is this? And we can see this play out in, on the social media with regards to this obsession with healing. Everybody's healing. Oh, we have to heal. We have to decolonize. We have to heal. My friends, my family, my social community, my earthling family. One thing that I can tell you about our pop, possibility of healing is that we have to acknowledge that healing is impossible, that deep within our society that there is a historical trauma that is just unhealable, a historical trauma, Holocaust, slavery, blah, 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 all of these things, all of these historical traumas that we li literally cannot escape from. And once you understand that healing is not really a possibility for us as a humanity, then we can actually start to work to within the worst case scenario. That's what cyberfunkism is all about. So search on Reddit, r cyberfunkism. We acknowledge that healing is not possible, which is something that goes completely against all this 
Instagram feminist psychobabble that we're seeing all across Instagram, all these hashtags, everybody repeating the same idioms. I'm saying that healing is not possible. And once you are able to realize that you don't need to heal, that there are parts of you that will never heal. And when you acknowledge that, you can live with it. There's plenty of people that live with you know, diseases that they can never come back from, or you know, they live with cancer, they live with AIDS, they live with all of these you know, uncurable issues, right? So, or diabetes or whatever, we have to live like that. We have to acknowledge that there's parts of our psyche, our collective psyche that can never heal. And we have to acknowledge that this insatiable need to heal, this insatiable need to understand, this insatiable need to define, define love, define abuse. These are actually motivated by our trauma as well and our vicarious traumatization, right? And so... It's a it's a fucked up uh, world that we live in where, you know, all of these standards that we are creating for society actually work to make society much worse than it actually is. You know, we're, we're teaching kids, we're teaching grade one kids to do social capital cost benefit analysis when it comes to their own privilege. It's it's truly evil. All right. So so if we can. So if we can acknowledge that, you know, true healing means that you are able to wear your scarves, true healing or authentic healing, I think instead in contrast to this kind of perpetual process of healing that people talk about. I think true healing is this ability to wear your vulnerabilities outside on your wrist, showing it to everybody, those vulnerabilities, being able to show those vulnerabilities. Unfortunately, feminist society once again has ruined that idea of being vulnerable in our society because it is too much emotional labor to listen to the problems of our, of our friends. Instead, we need to pay psychologists to listen to us. And again, this is why psychologists and feminists go so hand in hand with one another, because not only do they <laughs> impose a certain social perspective on the world, they can actually cut off critique and refuse to take on critique. And not only do they do that, they actually go into other disciplines, the discipline of psychology, the discipline of philosophy. They go and they enforce their radical bullshit um, of commodifying our interpersonal human relationships, of seeing co cost benefit, privileged relationships with every relationship that we have. That kind of um, neoliberal colonization of the mind is seen as progressive, right? And it's motivated, again, by this. Afro-pessimistic perspective, this Afro-pessimism that 